Hello everyone, welcome along to our day four wrap of the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. And what a day it's been, probably the toughest of the challenge so far. Temperatures reached 40 degrees, plus there was plenty of wind and also lots of dust. Now those conditions caused lots of problems for Nuon and Tokai, who both had to stop and change tyres after they were blown sideways across the road. At around about 11am this morning, the Uni of New South Wales team overtook Eindhoven. Now that's a great result for them, they're powered to the top of the cruiser class and they were first across the border into South Australia. TAFE SA though, a tough day for those guys and they had to be trailered into Coober Pedy. But position isn't everything in the Michelin Cruiser class. Team Eindhoven, well they've got all four seats of their vehicle occupied and that can put them at a distinct advantage. You're the manager of the Cruiser class, hence the name Dr Cruz. Tell me how it's shaping up at the pointy end of this uh, event. Oh, it's absolutely thrilling, it's absolutely thrilling. What, what it looks like is actually going to end up shaping the outcome of the event will be the number of people that have been carried. Eindhoven, with their ability to carry four people in, in the car, have a, an enormous advantage in that fact. And, and, I mean, they're at a disadvantage in terms of the time that they've taken, but by being, at, being able to take four people all the way from um, Darwin down to Adelaide, they're going to be they're, they're in, a, in a strong position. It's the first time that we've ever had a solar car that has had, had the ability to have four passengers, let alone actually driven with four passengers. So it's going to be um, it's going to be an interesting interesting outcome for this event. I mean, does practicality really win over pure performance? So let's take a look at the day four results and in the Klitzel and Schneider Electric Challenger class, well, it's shaping up for a grand finale. Tokai is only 25 kilometres behind leader Nuon with 138 k's to go in the race. Now these first two have a healthy 200k buffer over third place Team Twente. In the Michelin Cruiser class, as we heard before, Sunswift entered Cooper PD first, about an hour ahead of Powercore Sun Cruiser and also Eindhoven. And finally in the GoPro Adventure class, we see Aurora, the only car to make it into Cooper PD. The rest of the field had to be trailered in. Now the forecast for tomorrow, a welcome change for drivers with a maximum of only 23 degrees Celsius. But in terms of powering the vehicles, plenty of cloud cover and even the chance of showers. With the end of the challenge fast approaching, now's the time to get involved if you're in Adelaide. The official City of Adelaide finish line in High Marsh Square is gearing up for the arrival of the first teams. From tomorrow, Thursday the 10th, until Sunday the 13th, you can pop along to visit the cars and crews. You can also ride around on a City of Adelaide bike for free. If you'd like to test drive a low emission vehicle, just register on our website at worldsolarchallenge.org forward slash clean drive. So it's all happening between 9 and 4 each day and on Sunday you can enjoy a feast at Fork in the Road from noon. Tomorrow the leaders will cross the finish line and we'll bring you all the action from 5pm Australian Central Standard Time. And on Friday we'll have a comprehensive wrap of the entire World Solar Challenge. Make sure you join us tomorrow afternoon. We'll see you then.